to the black meteors you are one with um, that is guinea and um <laughs> i mean where do i start from where do i start from it's i don't know i don't know but i'm disappointed i'm disappointed i'm gutted I'm actually embarrassed by our poor showing in the Afghan under 23 tournament. But before I go into deep discussions into it, this is Sahara Football. My name is Rafael Banaman Kote. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please do so and subscribe to their channel. So let's quickly delve into the match. I mean, the Black Meteors drew 1-1 with Guinea. And I mean, there are a few pointers from this particular game. Let me start off by saying that, I mean, we are miles off. We are miles off as a football nation. I mean, if we want to recapture the glory days that um, helped us to win championship and also helped us to become one of the very best on the Afghan scenes and to be even recognized on the global stage, I, need, I think we need to go back to the basics. In this particular game that the black meteors is played you could notice that i mean on the back foot of um losing to that is morocco by five goals to one coach tanko he actually uh, made some substitutions then the free Banya came into the setup we also had emmanuel siam coming into the setup if um, that's ashikwe ashikwe was also handed a starting bet similar to that is natiana um aj he was also handed a starting bet so you feel as though um, Coach Tanko has learned his lessons and he wanted to apply some bit of tactics to the side. So he deployed a 3-4-3 formation in this particular game so that he would use more of the laterals. It means that Ashikwe and Akumensa would be doing more of the running. So in transition, they do the three-back system. And whilst the team is back in defense, they do the five-back uh, flat so that he has men in the midfield. But you, you will notice that once the team was in transition from um, defense to attack, the laterals, that is Akumens and Ashikwe, to join in attack, I mean, they were found missing. And it speaks volumes of the fact that uh, when these guys go to training, do they really learn the basic success expected of them? I feel as though, I mean, the technical team didn't do us the honors in the game against, uh, that is Guinea. I mean, the tactics just didn't work right for us. And we fell short on so many occasions. There was no creativity within the setup. I mean, deploying a three prompt attack in Efri Ebania, Imano, um, Yebo, as well as Fatao Isahako, you would think that, I mean, there is space up front, there is power up front, there is energy up front. But, I mean, in the first half, these guys, yes, Ghana was leading by a goal to nil. Even that was from a miscued prize from the Guinean goalkeeper. That is what led to us. Um, eventually scoring but we didn't clear we didn't we didn't create any clear cut chances in the game and you would ask yourself that in a game of 90 minutes and we are not able to um, create formidable chances to hurt our opponents i mean where do we go from here and it's, it's, it's really really shambolic the way the boys played i felt that there is no team cohesion within the boys yes i know that um, the guys would have come very less of a time. They had few friendly matches to play against the Zamalek under 23 as well as the Egypt under 23. But I mean, if you have these guys who have been some play in the local Premier League, that is the best part Premier League, and others that were called from in Finland, in Gent, in New York, and other clubs, you would expect that. I mean, these are guys that have played football they actually have their basics but they were not able to translate it on the field so it really didn't help us in the course of the game so i've spoken about lack of team cohesion the team cohesion wasn't there the tactics on the day just didn't suit uh, the match on the building against guinea because when you look at the way the guinean side played they were very comfortable on the ball i mean in possession they were just top class the way they possess the ball it speaks volumes of their confidence the guys were able to possess the ball to the latter i mean they are stringing multiple passes in transition they were fantastic in defense they were also fantastic the way they actually held their nerve i mean it speaks volumes of a well coached and on a well-trained side that is the guinean side and 
I am very, very happy for how the Guinean side played today. They were not afraid playing the Black Meteors. They held their own against the Black Meteors. But, I mean, we weren't able to create chances against them very bad on any other occasion. Communication was a problem in, in, in the game. I mean, we would feel that in the hearts of defense, because Coach Tanko deployed a three-man defense. Terry Yegbe, Afrani, Nathaniel J, the three-man defense. The communication was just not there. I mean, there were times where Terry Yegbe was supposed to communicate properly with Danlad Ibrahim in the post for the Black Meteors, but it just wasn't there. And for a side that had considered eight goals in three matches, I mean, you will agree with me that they have no business to qualify into the semi-finals because if you consider eight goals, if your defense is able to consider eight goals in three matches, it shows that you have no business. You have no business, I mean, qualifying to the next stage of the competition because teams that have been able to qualify, they held their nerve. I mean, there's a clear-cut plan. There's a clear-cut strategy. There's a clear-cut tactics that are employed on the game. When Coach Tanko subbed off, that is Emmanuel Yeboa for NS Nyama, I mean, he made so many questions in the game, but I feel that there were times where he was a bit on, on the selfish run. There were times where he could have held his nerve and picked passes because there was one clear opportunity he had to square the ball to the second striker and boom, Ghana would have just gone two goals up in that particular game. But, well, he couldn't. He felt that there was an opening for him to shoot. Well, he missed that opportunity. Moving forward, I feel that, I mean, we'll come home, we'll regroup, uh, we'll go back to the bases because... I mean, Ghana football has fallen way, way off. I mean, you look at sides like Senegal. I mean, they have dominated African football in the last one year. Morocco are also dominating African football. Senegal, like I mentioned, Morocco, um, Mali, Cameroon, um, Egypt, the North African sides. I mean, they are investing properly into the game of football. And you see, one thing we as a people need to understand is that we have tailed off in the whole football business thing and we need clear restructuring we need clear restructuring from the basics right from the courts football the grassroots football up onto the senior national team the black stars because you would see that there is no progression because when you look at top elite um, football nations. I mean, there is an element of progression with their football. You play under 15, you are two to the under 17, under 20, 23, then to the senior national team. So there is a clear cut strategy. There is an agenda to make sure that they succeed. There is a long term plan and goal and development that they mainly use. But we, I mean, it's always inshallah and vibes. We just kick the ball thinking that we will find the, the head of one of our players to kick the ball into the back of the net. Football has evolved. Football has changed. We need to change a lot of our, our games. And you see, the time where we get to look ourselves in the faces and tell ourselves that, Charlie, we've tailed off and that we will probably use five to ten years to develop our football, to invest properly into players, to invest properly into coaches, into the technical brains that would help interpret versions on the pitch. That is when we will know that, I mean, we can rub shoulders with the very best on the continent. But as of now, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Because in this particular game, we created very few chances. There was no creativity in the heart of midfield. There was no creativity in the heart of defense. I mean, our strike force, it was just blunt. Attack was just blunt. Because Emmanuel Isiam, he had come into the game. We would ex expected that he would carry the ball because he was patching Hafiz Ibrahim in the heart of midfield. I mean, there was no progression for midfield to attack. Fatal Isaku, I mean, he was interchanging with um, Daniel Free Banier as well as Emmanuel Yeboa at some point of the game. But it just didn't work. It means that the tactics on the day that was deployed didn't work because we went for a 3 4 3 formation. At some point, we went for a 3 5 2 formation and we reverted back to a 4 4 2 formation as and when we were chasing the game. When the Guinness had equalized around the 60th minute thereabouts, that's when we wanted to 
chase the game and it was it was late as at that time i f- i feel that if we want to do something better for our football i mean we need to go back to the grassroots we need to invest properly in development in infrastructure in equipment in our boys in coaches in the systems in science in data in order to get our football back to the very level pegging that we expect. So, I mean, that's my assessment of today's game. The Black Meteors drew 1-1 with Guinea. The Black Meteors are coming home. Guinea progresses to the semi-finals alongside Morocco. Uh, so, that's all about it. My name is Rafa Banaman Kwote. Um, keep up alive with sports. If you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please do so to subscribe to the channel. Peace. Mm-hmm.